Good day, friends. Welcome to our service. Welcome to you, no matter where you're watching and when you're watching. We're just glad you're here. This, of course, is only a half of what's happening this morning, if you're watching on Sunday mornings, because at this exact same time, I'm also standing right there, preaching from there as well. It's the magic of technology. And, um, and of course, if you are in the Moose Jaw area and you wish to join us on Sunday mornings, you are more than welcome. Uh, but of course, we will still be continuing our online presence. And we are, you may have noticed on our Facebook page, we are exploring, sometimes a little bit messily, our uh, streaming capabilities. Right now, we're just playing around, seeing what works, and that's why we're still putting these YouTube videos up just to make sure that all of the weird technical things are taken care of. Like last week, our sound wasn't really all that great, but we do have plans in store to make it all n run much, much more smoothly. And so if you are one of our online viewers, please stay tuned because things are going to get even better. But for now, please join me in prayer. Holy Spirit, as we enter into our time of worship, we ask that you open our hearts to your presence, to your wisdom, and to your compassion. We open ourselves to thinking in new ways about your nature and about the unending promise of your grace. Be with us and remind us that you are always more than we can imagine. You are more forgiving, more welcoming, and so much more than fair. We pray to you, who is our mother and our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Our scripture reading today is probably one of the most well-known parables that Jesus spoke. I think it's maybe one of the best stories that has ever been told. This is from Luke 15. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them a parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. And so he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I will get up, I'll go to my father and I will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he went off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. And he ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out a robe, 
the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his fingers and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let's eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he, has got, because he is back safe and sound. Then he became very angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, listen, for all these years, I have been working as a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But, one, but when this son of yours comes back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. And the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and has been found. I have best dad. No, really. I have the very, very best dad. How can I be so sure? Well, it's because I am the very worst son. You don't believe me? Well, let me tell you. I had everything. I had comfort and wealth. I had servants and a good home. I never spent a day hungry or doubting the possibility of my future, all because my father was a great man of great honor in the community. And I too would always be seen as honorable because of my dad. Yeah, there wasn't always cheery in the family. There was some si sibling rivalries between me and my brother. I always see, thought it was kind of an unfair that he was going to inherit most of my father's land. But you know, that just is kind of the way it is when you're the second born instead of the first. And I'd, I'd love to say that what I did was because of some rebellion against social norms that gave the majority of the wealth to the one who just happens to be born first. But really, I just did what I did because I was bored. I did what I did because I was impatient. I wanted to unleash my wealth and ambition on the world and live it up. I wanted to see other lands and be a, a, acquainted with their women. I wanted to drink the best wine and forget about all the responsibility. To do this though, I had to go to my father and ask for an advance on my inheritance. And looking back, I admit that was pretty callous of me. Asking for something that I'm not supposed to get until my father's death is a bit like saying that I wish he was dead. And yes, this was going to do damage to his honor in the community. People would always see him as the one who couldn't control his own sons. But what did I care? Adventure awaits. The flaw in my plan, though, became really clear very quickly. It was surprising how, f how fast I could drink my way through all the wealth my dad had given me. And after that, you know that landlords won't pay, let you pay rent with an assurance that one's father far, far away has money? They want to see cash in hand which I didn't have. It was long, wasn't long before I was begging for food and 
taking any job I could get just to stay alive. I even had to work as a pig keeper. Can you imagine a good Jew having to work with the pigs? And worse than that, can you imagine a Jew stealing the food from the pig's trough just so I could have something in my belly? I'm worse than the pigs. Sometimes it takes reaching rock bottom, but I finally came to my senses. I'd go back home, I'd beg forgiveness, and ask to be one of my father's servants. Yeah, that was the plan I was going to do. And I, you know, I was so excited about that plan, I was so sure that I would be able to have at least the very basics of living. I didn't even tell the pig owner, I just left and walked as home as fast as my feet would take me. I didn't know what to expect when I got near the house, but there was my dad out on the road. What's he doing there? It's almost like he was waiting for me. So he, he sees me and he, he bunches up his cloak up around his thighs and starts running and crying my name. I'm the one who's been living with the pigs, and I'm almost feeling embarrassed for him. I'm sure the neighbors were clucking their tongues and shaking their heads. He just didn't seem to care about his honor and how he looked. He was just so happy to see me. He ordered the slaughter of the biggest cow, the one that he was saving for festival, and he threw me a feast. No, living as a servant, no anger, no questions where I'd been, just a celebration of my return. I gotta tell you, everybody should have a parent like mine. <laughs> it's amazing. But then again, who knows? Maybe you too have a parent that loves you this much. I have got the worst brother. He had all the comforts of home he could ever want. And the only thing that was asked of him was to help run the family farm and not bring dishonor to the family. So what does he go off and do then? He claims his share of father's inheritance and runs off to live a wild life with who knows who and who knows where. And that left me to take on his share of the work. That left me to take care of father. That left me to endure the sideways glances and whispers about how my father had lost his, his senses and his honor when his son took such terrible disadvantage of him. Maybe you've been in a similar situation. Maybe you've been the one who's had to be the responsible one. It's kind of a pain, isn't it? Maybe you too thought that you were being taken advantage of. Oh, I don't have to worry about all my parents. My brother and my sister will feel obligated to cover for me. Yeah, I bet some of you understand. But then, Later on, he waltzes on back home and he's given a hero's welcome. There's a party and gifts and a cow that I have been feeding and tending all this time so it could be slaughtered for the festival. The thing is, he took his share of the inheritance. And so where are all these gifts coming from? You got it from my portion. Dad is taking from me, who worked so hard for all these years and is giving it to that spoiled brat that abandoned his family. You know what really hurts? Dad didn't even tell me that my brother had arrived home. He didn't even tell me there was going to be a party. I heard it secondhand from one of his servants. How long would it have been before they realized I wasn't there? Would they have even cared? 
It's just not fair. I've worked hard all these years. I've been so devoted. I've been the good son. Do I get a party? Do I get a feast? No. Now, after I've found out, Dad says that I should join in. But I can't join that party. I can't join in the fun. I have to miss it all. So he will finally see how unfair this all is. You understand, right? I have the very best children. I admit I was hurt when my youngest asked for his inheritance. When he walked away from me and all that I had provided for him, my heart really did break. And yeah, the neighbors scoffed at me and told me that I should have forced him to stay, but I love my children. And it's not loving to force my will on them. It's not loving to coerce or blackmail. As much as it hurt, I had to allow the greatest gift anyone can be given. Their own free will, their own chance to mess up. As hurt as I was when he left, my heart leapt for joy when he returned. My child was alive. My child was found. My child came home. This was truly one of the happiest days of my life. I know I had reason to be mad. It could have been completely justified to be angry. I could have just asked him what, to work in the fields like he suggested and live with my servants. But my child was home. Have you ever lost something or someone that you absolutely adored? What would you give to have them return? Would you trade a cow, a bit of your pride? Well, of course you would. It was hard to get our neighbors to come to the party. And those who came, a lot of them did seem pretty judgmental. But you know what? I don't care. My love is mine to give, and I'm not going to let anyone else decide for me who is and who is not deserving of my love. Okay, my older son is pretty upset, and this too breaks my heart. Why must he separate himself from his family? Why can't he understand that we'll all be far, far happier when we let go of expectation of who is and who is not deserving of my love? This party is just as much for him because this is about the restoration of family, a family that he is a part of. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. My Children all have their own ideas and priorities, and they all need to find their own way. I suppose it's in their nature to rebel and run away. I suppose it's in their nature to try to decide for me who is and who is not worthy. I just hope that they will finally understand that it's in my nature. It is who I am as their parent to love. No matter what, no matter when, I will always love all of my children and I will not be limited by some self-righteous neighbors, by expectation of what's fair, or even what my children feel they do or do not deserve. I am their parent and the only thing they need to know is that I love them. Please join me in prayer. 
Holy God, we give thanks for everything that has brought us to this place, everything we have and everything you will continue to provide. We give you thanks that you are always welcoming us. The farther we stray, the wider you open your arms to embrace us when we return. Even when it seems that we'll never return to the fold, you are there on the, wrong, on the roadside, watching for our appearance on the horizon. No matter how foolish we sometimes are, no matter how we take for granted your grace, you have a place set for us at the banquet of your love. We give thanks for this community of faith. While we can never comprehend your fullness, we can experience a bit of your love through the love shown through these people. When people are away for a long time, we pray that we can always share in the celebrations of return. Remind us to learn from the older brother that we do not get to define who is and who is not seen as worthy of welcome. We do not have the authority to decide who you celebrate. May we love foolishly, welcome irrationally, and always be ready to ignore the metaphoric grumpy neighbors questioning our good sense. We pray for each other in our community. Like the prodigal father, some of us are separated from those we love, either by great distance or by estrangement or by death and sickness. Some of us would love to be running down the road, arms wide to welcome long lost ones. But while we wait for a returning banquet, may we all find comfort in your presence. And may each of us be willing to offer comfort through our friendship and prayer to each other. We pray for our siblings of every tradition, religion, and nationality. How is it that so many people, even those who claim to worship you and follow the words of your son, can be so motivated by hate and fear and division? How is it that your children so often return to violence and war rather than looking into the face of a neighbor and seeing your love reflected. We pray for those in Ukraine and all other people touched by war. We pray that we may be instruments of your healing peace by finally understanding that we are called to love those whom you love. And Holy God, we thank you for hearing our prayers and we rejoice that the invitation to your banquet is as eternal as you. Amen.
Just don't get caught up on whether or not you approve of the others on the guest list. Don't exclude yourself because of your own biases and judgments. Because the party's going on. God has invited us. There's music and dancing and love and grace. Amen. <laughs>